this week right here on Charger Bulletin News. The beautiful 9-11 Remembrance Ceremony, student resources being offered on campus, and Charger Sports are back right here on Charger Bulletin News. Welcome back to another episode of Charger Bulletin News. My name is Elisa Broche. And I'm Michael Crowley. Let's jump right into this week's stories. Having trouble balancing school and mental health? The ARC and the Dean of Students Office will be hosting the first of many Wellness Days events starting on September 16th and continuing throughout the week. The programs are designed to help students prioritize emotional, mental, and physical well-being exercises, discussions, and time management strategies will be promoted to foster proactive academic environments. Attending students will leave with a better understanding on how to handle whatever college life throws their way. Check out Charger Connection with the times and places for more information about all these events. Workshops include therapy docs, CAP services, and suicide prevention programs. Have questions? Contact the Accessibility and Resources Center at arc at newhaven.edu or reach out to the Dean of Students office at deanofstudents at newhaven.edu. Last Wednesday, September 4th, Lou Anino, Associate Vice President of Facilities, emailed the Charger community regarding the presence of asbestos on campus. Asbestos is a mineral fiber commonly used in building construction for insulation and its fire retardant properties. Materials containing asbestos may include pipe insulation, walls, and floor tiles. This includes any building or residence hall built before 1981. They claim there's an improvement plan in place to remove all asbestos from campus buildings and residence halls in the future. Anino assured that the university maintains the safety of the staff, residents, and visitors through their asbestos management plan. This plan guarantees safety by complying with all state and federal legislation in regard to present asbestos. Anino said, quote, the university has continued to employ highly trained professionals to conduct inspections as well as coordinate and supervise asbestos-related construction activities, end quote. To maintain safety from asbestos, the campus community is advised to avoid damaging ceilings, walls, tiles, and pipes. Do not drill, nail, or create any holes in walls, floors, or ceilings, or hang objects from the ceilings. If you suspect or notice any damage, please contact the 24-7 facility support number at 203-932-7087. For further questions on the existence of asbestos on campus, contact Lou Anino at lanino at newhaven.edu. Now we'll head to Will Whalen to find out what's going on in the world of Charger Sports. Tell us all about it, Will. Thanks, Michael. I'm Will Whalen, and welcome back to the Charger Sports Report. Both men's and women's soccer had an eventful season kickoff. Men's soccer kicked their season off with a commanding 4-0 shutout over Holy Family last Thursday. The Chargers didn't stop there, picking up a 5-0 victory against Dominican University Sunday afternoon. Field hockey was able to secure a victory against the American International Yellow Jackets last Thursday. Shout out to senior Abby Nixon, who scored the final goal to allow the Chargers to take a 2-1 lead. New Haven's offense stepped up during the second half, led by forward Kat Trammell. Field hockey will return tomorrow with an away match against the Shippensburg Raiders. Women's tennis had no problems against Malloy, defeating them with a 7-0 victory Friday in New Hampshire. Beginning with a strong early season dominance, tennis will be having a busy weekend where they will be traveling to the ITA championships. Men and women's cross country had a great weekend at the Hartford Invitational with both men and women finishing third out of the eight schools competing. Leading the men, Mohamed Abunar finished fifth in the field, crossing with a final time of 1640. The women's team had just as an eventful of a meet. April McCurry led the way for the Lady Chargers and set the tone early finishing third overall, crossing at 11.20. Cross Country will return this weekend at the Wesleyan Cardinal Invitational on Saturday with a start time of 10.30 a.m. For more schedules and updates for Charger Athletics, make sure to go to newhavenchargers.com. Good luck to all student athletes who are beginning their competitive season. Go Chargers! That's all we have for Charger Sports this week. I'm Will Whalen, and now we'll head to Jade Edwards Figueroa with updates in the world of entertainment. What do you have for us, Jade? I'm Jade Edwards-Figueroa, and welcome back to Entertainment. 
The 2024 Creative Arts Emmys delivered big wins across a variety of categories this year. Shogun emerged as a standout, claiming a record-setting 14 awards. The Bear also made waves with John Berthnall and Jamie Lee Curtis earning awards for outstanding guest actor and actress in a comedy. All the while, Angela Bassett achieved her first ever Emmy win for Outstanding Narrator for her work in Queens. The ceremony also honored excellence in areas like production design, music composition, and special effects, ensuring to spotlight all the talents behind the scenes. With star-studded wins across the board this year, next year is sure to cause even more commotion. As we covered last week, the ghostly charm of Beetlejuice has made its triumphant return. The sequel conjured an impressive $110 million in its opening weekend at the domestic box office. Directed by Tim Burton, the film reunites Michael Keaton as the beloved mischief-making ghost Beetlejuice and Winona Ryder playing Lydia, while introducing Jenna Ortega as a new character, Lydia's daughter. Internationally, the film raked in an additional $35.4 million, bringing its global total to $145.5 million. The film's blend of nostalgia, star power, and fresh storytelling has drawn rave reviews from fans and critics alike. As the second largest September debut on record, Beetlejuice Beetlejuice marks a major box office milestone. Just behind 2017's It, the mixture of humor, horror, and unforgettable performances brought to the screen has revived interest in the Beetlejuice universe for a new generation of fans. With momentum building, this sequel is poised to dominate the nature of Halloween season as more viewers make their way to theaters. The internet has been left speechless after popular internet personality Nikocado Avocado revealed his drastic weight loss this weekend. Nick Accato, whose real name is Nicholas Perry, is a traditionally mukbang YouTuber. Nick has been posting routine binging content regularly until his recent video, Two Steps Ahead. The video premiered on YouTube last Friday, garnering 26 million views over the weekend alone. Nick begins in a panda mask, covering his face while explaining he has pulled off one of the greatest social experiments on the internet to date. By uploading pre-recorded content over these last two years, he was able to spend his time losing weight while still receiving a steady income from his Nikocado character. His video is quite chilling, addressing his viewers in an ominous whisper, speaking down to those who fell for his trick. Let's take a look at how Nikocado spoke to his audience. Two steps ahead. I am always two steps ahead. This has been the greatest social experiment of my entire life. It's alluring, it's compelling, it's gripping to observe all these unwell, disoriented beings roam the internet in search of stories. So I am the villain because I've myself one. Quite alarming. In traditional internet fashion, people have been speculating just how true this story is. Regardless of if you're interested in influencer drama, the question remains if this social experiment is truly one for the history books. That's all for this week. We'll see you next week with new updates in the world of entertainment. I'm Jade Edwards Figueroa. Now let's head back to the desk with Elisa. Looking for more ways to advance your education, but not sure how to balance your mental health? Let's head to Hayden to find out what's being offered to students to make our transition back to school go a little smoother. Thanks, Elisa. I'm Hayden Leach. Let's talk about what's going on this week in student life. One Stop is now offering extended office hours and in some new locations. Mondays and Wednesdays, they will be open from 8.30 a.m. and closing at 6 p.m. If you're stuck on Orange Campus, pop over to the main lobby anytime between 9 and 11 or 3 to 6 for extra assistance with your work. They will also be having some pop-up hours today in the Peterson Library from 1 to 4 and next week from 12 to 2 in the Jeffrey Haslow Athletic Center. 
Keep an eye on your email for additional dates, times, and locations for additional one-stop hours. Are you a transfer student to the university? Join the transfer peer mentors in support of welcoming our new chargers. Next Wednesday, September 18th at 1 p.m. in the Alumni Annex Lounge, new transfer undergrads can socialize, explore campus events, and meet fellow peers. Look for the lounge upstairs in Bartels. Make sure to check your charger connection to RSVP for the event. Remember, only undergraduates are allowed to attend. You'll receive an email reminder once completing the RSVP. Questions? Reach out to mbaylog at newhaven.edu. The annual Fall Career Fair is here. Join the Career Development Center as the Rec Center on 12th of September and head over to the Rec Center today at 1 to gain insights about internships and job applications from professionals at each station with over 50 booths to visit varying in different skill sets. For a list of participating tables, visit Charger Connection under the Handshake tab. Make sure to have an updated resume on hand for the vendors. In addition to the booths, there is a picture station to get professional quality photos done to increase your portfolio. The attire is business casual, so dress your best. No business attire, no problem. Visit the campus closet at 21 Rudin Street for additional pieces. Have questions? Contact the CDC at Career Development Center at newhaven.edu. That's all for Student Life this week. I'm Hayden Leach. Now let's head back to the desk with Michael. Yesterday, USGA and collaborators across campus came together for the annual 9-11 Remembrance Ceremony. Students and staff gathered bright and early on the Maxi Quad. It was a beautiful morning with sunny and clear skies and a refreshing fall breeze. Darby Brown, undergraduate student body president, organized the very structured ceremony. Marty O'Connor began with the opening speech, followed by a moment of silence. The silence was followed by a beautiful national anthem, thanks to the Charger Marching Band. President Fredrickson was in attendance to provide a speech at the memorial. The ceremony wrapped with Lauren Polinski leading attendees to the memorial tree to ring the bell and place American flags around the base of the trunk. The destruction and lives lost during the 9-11 tragedy is one that will never be forgotten. Are you an aspiring entrepreneur? The Entrepreneurship Club is hosting their annual Smurd Pitch competition. All of you future entrepreneurs will get the chance to pitch your ideas individually or in collaboration for a new business. Sign up, pitch your idea, and have the chance to win $10,000 in seed funding. The competition is open to both graduate and undergraduate students from all majors. If you want the opportunity to make a change, make sure to register through Charger Connection by September 26th. For more details, check out the Happening on Campus tab on my Charger page. That's all the time we have for this week. You can check out the latest Charger Bulletin newspaper on chargerbulletin.com or newsstands around campus. Stay up to date by following us on social media at Charger Bulletin. Check out our link tree for access to the Horseshoe Magazine. Thank you for joining us. My name is Elisa Broche. And I'm Michael Crowley. We'll see you next week with another episode of Charger Bulletin News.